What's going on YouTube? Greg411 back. Um, about a couple hours ago I made a video and the TV glare was in the way and the, 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 the volume was like completely like out of whack. So instead of complaining and getting angry, I calmed down and I just decided to make another video. For those who have already seen the video, I actually added some new ones in, took a few of them out, but for those who haven't seen it, this is a... Um, this is the Halloween recommendations. Um, I'm getting back to the cards and stuff. Probably starting tomorrow. But um, this is this is the Halloween. This is getting us into the month of October. Hit it strong. And this is what I'm recommending. That If you're a horror fan or if you want to watch some scary movies, this is what I'm recommending for this month. And um, starting October 11th um, on, um, on AMC starts their Halloween a marathon where all their plan is continuous horror movies and sci-fi is already doing something and at the end of the month ABC Family's doing their horror but really looking forward to AMC putting out their movies because they usually put all the mainstream stuff out. Starting off we're going to do where if you have a date night with your girlfriend or your friend whatever you want to do and she doesn't want to watch something very gory but she wants something scary my best recommendation is definitely Paranormal Activity. I mean Paranormal Activity 1 is pretty scary. Paranormal Activity 2, it, it had its moments, but Paranormal Activity 3 is definitely where you want to go. If you want to, if you really want the girl to be close to you and you want to scare her, you put Part 3 in and you enjoy the ride. Now, starting with the real recommendations, I'm going to start off with Amusement. Now, Amusement is a little indie, low-budget film um, put out by New Line. It's, um... I mean, it's a decent, it's a decent movie. It's a decent pickup, especially if you can get it for like five bucks, which is usually about what you can usually pick it up for. And um, the whole movie revolves around one thing, but it's in like sort of different stories. And the whole movie's worth the whole watch in this one clown scene because you're sitting there and you're like, well, it's not so scary. It's not that bad. It's not, it's not terrible. And then the clown scene happens. You're like, ooh. No, 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 Mr. Director, no. Don't like clowns. We're not going to do that. I applaud you for that. Next up, if you want to go psychological, if you want your mind to be messed with, if you want everything that you thought you knew about a horror movie to be tested, I suggest you check out Session 9. Nowhere near is this movie scary. There's not a jump scene every five minutes. You're not going to be sitting down going, oh, God. But no. It's it's about an hour and 40 minutes, and as you sit down, you're given a little ride through what these guys at this uh, this hospital that they're trying to clear out is going through, and slowly but surely, they're losing their mind, and they're thinking there's a pa the, the patients are like possessing them, and the whole movie, I'm sitting there, and it's not really that scary, but when you, th you, know, you start thinking about it, you're like, ah... But it was that it was that wheelchair, and if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. It's that wheelchair that you see over and over again. You're like, what the hell is that thing? It's starting to creep me out. And at the very end, without giving anything away, there's a pretty interesting twist. But at the very end, there's a, like a, a, a backdrop of one of the patients, like, and you hear people, and you hear the guy talking, and you're like, ah, oh, it's creepy as hell, man. Next up, Psycho Ward. If you watch the original video, I'm going to do the same thing. Psycho Ward. It's for my loyal subscribers that love to watch me throw things. If you, whoops, if you watch Psycho Ward, if you have it in your collection, or if you're walking by and you see this amazing cover, and it's called Psycho Ward, and it's about these people that go into a, a, a psychiatric hospital, and that movie almost made me not want to watch Grave Encounters. I'm glad I did, but that is the movie that single-handedly almost ruined indie horror for me. It was shot on someone's old Nokia phone. It was stupid. I, I wanted I wanted to personally kill every character in the movie. Instead of the killer killing them, I wish I could have killed everyone. And it, it, it was it was terrible. Let's 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 get back into this. You want to go gory? You want to go sadistic? You want to go sick? You want to go? Why the hell am I watching this? I suggest you go Rob Zombie. Starting off with House of a Thousand Corpses. House of a Thousand Corpses, the first time you watch it, you, you know, in the middle of the movie, you're like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like, it reminds me 
especially how they get to the house and it's raining and it, 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 it shows a little Rocky Horror Picture Show. There's no musical, it ain't nothing like that, but I mean, Captain Spaulding, the, the fire, it's, it's awesome. But when you get done with House of a Thousand Corpses, you put on Devil's Rejects. And when you put on Devil's Rejects, you're in for the ride of your life of sadistic gore to where you're to the point where midway through the movie, you're making sure no one else is watching this because you feel as if you're doing something wrong. And this girl right here, be prepared to fall in love with her. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait till she runs out in the middle of the road. You'll know what I'm talking about. Now, going through, you know, part one, part two, part three. Part I liked. I actually liked the Vegas one. Part two, uh, but it all started with this movie, and it all started with two scenes that made me love Hostel, which made me love Eli Roth even as much as I did when he did Cabin Fever. And it's the scene where the guy's getting the back of his foot caught off, and the guy that's cutting it stops. He stops, and he goes, you may go. And the guy gets up, and he gets up, and <clears throat> you gotta see it. If, if you know what I'm talking about, you just cringe a little bit, or you, you realize the scene, and you're like, ah, if you haven't, you need to do it. But the thing is, the revenge, the revenge scene, the best revenge scene ever. I mean, I spit on your grave, yeah, last house on the left, that's fine, but this, in my opinion, had everyone in the audience going, yes, that just happened. The revenge scene in this movie is undeniably one of the best. Okay, I get to the next movie. We're going to we're gonna go through everything. It's the scariest movie of all time. Um, it's what stands the test of time. When, Whenever it first was announced on Blu-ray, people were pissed because they thought, oh, they're going to mess it up. They didn't. They took it, they, they put the, the, the spider walk scene in, they, 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 they put new coloring in it, and it looked amazing. Okay, Personally, I thought, I thought they did a wonderful job. And, you know, for people that are in high school now or late in the middle school that want to watch a horror movie, they're more than likely going to watch this movie and go, it's not that scary. Yeah, but you have to realize that back in 1973, when mostly movies were love stories and westerns and, and musicals, this guy put out a movie about fighting God, something people didn't even touch. That was something that people didn't do back in the day because people were afraid of the backlash. Next up is personally one of my favorite movies. Um, it's horror, it's suspense, it's drama, it's Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. This movie, beginning to end, it stars Michael Rooker as Henry, the drifter, the, the killer. The, the He gets out of jail, and he meets up with his best friend, and he falls in love with his best friend's sister. And it's, it's just his demented ride throughout the entire movie of what's going through his head. But, and you're... you're you're Henry throughout this movie. You feel bad for him. You see, you see why. You see why he kills. You see what started it all. And then the ending of this movie is un unbelievably phenomenal. Now, for the younger of the group, the, the late teens, the early teens, the per the people that love the anthologies, I'm, I have Creep Show, but I'm not going to touch Creep Show because I have Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat is the new generation of the the coolest horror anthology ever. Now, I'm going to warn you, you're going to watch one part of this movie and go, this doesn't make any damn sense. It doesn't make any damn sense. It's not supposed to. It's a horror movie. Let it go. Damn. Um, and it's it's pretty much, it's different stories. Um, werewolves and, and, and the, this little guy. And it's, it's different stories. And at the very end, just like all great anthologies do, it comes together and you're like, what? You got to check that out. Very highly recommend it for me. Now, for the people that love suspenses and the people that can sit through an over two-hour movie that has more dialogue than, than one of the Batman movies, Seven's your movie. Seven is perfect from beginning to end with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, and not to mention, come on, what's in the box? You cannot deny that, that some of this movie made you cringe, especially when they break in, they finally get into that room, and they see the body, and they go up to it, they think it's dead, and it starts moving. Oh, my God. But you will forever have the saying, what's in the box, imprinted in your mind, 
to where it, 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 it's unbelievable. Next up, for every person that's seen a horror movie when you were little, you remember seeing this movie and then having the unfortunate, the unfortunate opportunity to go swimming. And I'm talking about Jaws. I mean, when I was a kid, if the pool was this big, I was still like, Jaws is gonna get me. Oh my god, I gotta get out of this freaking pool. Um, unbelievable on Blu-ray. It comes with the, you know, the digi book, you know, the, the, the Blu-ray DVD, no, the regular DVD and the DVD on Blu-ray. And, you know, even, even now that it, shark movies are overdone and sand sharks and shark night and, you know, you know, I, every now and then they make a good one like Deep Blue Sea and, um, Red Water. I think that, I think that's the one. I don't know. But, um, it's unbelievable. I, it's still... So it stands the test of time is one of my favorite movies of all time. And, you know, it's something that every father or every uncle, whatever you are, you want to pass this movie down and just show, you know, you want to be the first person to show who Jaws was. Next up, I'm not going to discuss the whole entire Friday the 13th collection because everyone has seen every Friday the 13th at least 80 times. But I am going to tell you, if you're in a, if you're in a Jason mood and you don't know which two to pick. I'm going to help you out. You go with part one and you go with the new blood. Part one, we all know about part one. I'm going to go, I'm just going to discuss the new blood. The new blood is the telekinesic, the telekinetic, whatever the hell that word is. You know what I'm talking about. That girl and it, it's the very first time that Kane Hodder put the Jason suit on and he becomes his own, he becomes his own monster and it is, it's, it's, it is the best Friday 13th in my opinion. Next up, we're going to stay mainstream, and we're going to hit my two favorite. I had the entire set, but part two pisses me off, and I hate part two. Part four and five is okay. Freddy's dead, it's decent, and then Wes Craven's New Nightmare, I love it. But I'm just going to stick to Nightmare on Elm Street, part one, and Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Wars. Now, I don't have to say much about Nightmare on Elm Street, because you all know how it goes. Freddy Krueger... And, you know, this is the first time that, you know, you see the first time Johnny Depp's in a movie and he gets sucked through the bed. Unbelievable. But part three came along and part three, like, um, like with so many sequels, especially when you get to like three, four, what they lack is they lack origin originality to the original, you know, staying true to the original concept, yet making its own movie. And I love how they brought the kids in the hospital and how... You know, they're all, everything that they wanted to do in their dreams, they can do. But, you know, especially, welcome to prime time, bitch. You gotta love that. And you gotta love when he's dangling your boy off the off the balcony. And, you know, this one, this one's very loyal to the original. Next up, you know I had to do it. It's Halloween time. Halloween. Okay. I'm not really gonna talk about part five because... You know, like part five, I have, you know, Resurrection H2O. I have the Rob Zombie. You know what, Rob Zombie? I put you in my list for House of a Thousand Corpses. And I put you in there for Devil's Rejects. And if I ever seen The Lords of Salem yet, I'd probably say that's great because I've read great reviews. And I loved your remake of Halloween. Did you have to make a sequel? Did you have to make a sequel? Did you have to have him talk? Did you have to have him grunt? Did you have to admit, let me see him eat? I did not, sir, need to see Michael Myers eat. Stupid ass movie. But part four, if Michael Myers had a different mask on, it would probably be ranked in the top Halloweens. You know, this is ranked number three, but it could easily, it could easily smudge barely in its part in rank number two if it wasn't for that damn mask. But Halloween four. You know, the, the the next time you see Michael Myers is part three. <laughs> part three. <sighs> you got about five million people that want to slap the director. Tommy Lee Wallace, I think that's his name. You want to look him up, Tommy Lee Wallace? I think that, hold on, I'll, I'll make sure. I don't remember what horror movies. It is Tommy Lee Wallace. Tommy Lee Wallace ruined Halloween with part three, but whatever, we're not going to go there. And Michael comes back and... This time he's looking for his niece, not his sister. 
Then we're going to go to the, the, oh, the original, the iconic movie that started what many people say if Halloween, if Halloween wasn't made, you wouldn't see anything. You wouldn't see anything that you see today, and God knows what horror movies would have been because, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street was made to, to take on um, Michael Myers, and Jason, same thing. It was, all, it was all supposed to be the spook compared to what happens on Halloween night or what would happen in the woods or what would happen in your dreams. This movie took over. You know, it didn't always make... It, it was just like The Exorcist, though. When The Exorcist first came coming out, no one, no one really... But as soon as people started seeing it and seeing it for what it was and understanding... <sighs> I didn't forget Part 2, though. Part 2, yes, signed by John Carpenter himself. Part 2 is my absolute favorite in the series. The security Guard. The Needle to the Eye. The Drowning in the Hot Tub. The Drowning in... Oh, my goodness. And the way they brought Michael Myers to life after he was supposed to get shot and and whenever they think they found Michael Myers and whew, it wasn't him. And to conclude, I'm going to say that if you live in this generation and you want to kick October off correctly, if you want to start getting your horror fixed right, yet you don't want to watch, sit back and watch a movie. You go with The Walking Dead. Now, part now season one is only six episodes. And it sucked the way they did it when AMC first put out The Walking Dead. You watch an episode of The Walking Dead one week. The next week, you'd see a new episode. Then it'd be like, three weeks later, another episode of The Walking Dead. And they, they made it last the entire month. And a little bit into November. By separating the episodes, which... But part... What season two did, though... Season 2 made took what Walking Dead Season 1 did and evolved it into a huge story. And I cannot wait until Season 3 starts. Not this Sunday, but the next. And <laughs> why'd you have to make Shane a zombie, man? Shane was, my, Shane was my favorite. He killed somebody and he was my favorite. He, he was... Oh. God, you gotta love television. Well, there it is. But before I go, I'm going to tell y'all that Voice of the Voiceless is coming back next Wednesday night. Mark it on the calendar. Wednesday night. I'm giving everyone, not quite a week, but I'm giving everyone a fair amount of days to get your questions back together, to get your comments back together. And on Wednesday night, I guarantee you, if I have any questions or have any comments, even if it's one, Voice of the Voiceless will be back. Now, let me get something right. Whenever... I stopped making YouTube videos. I gave a reason to two people. The Joke in AZN and Newsboys fan 222. And it was because I'm a grown, I'm almost a grown man. I don't need to be dealing with 10 year old crap like frog bongos and, you know, other people where they were like, where they're like, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Okay, D don't watch my videos. You're not going to offend me. But it happened with, and I'm not even going to name this dude's name, but. You you probably know who he is by just a story where he would always message me and every time we'd get a deal together, he'd pull out and he'd start, you know, it wasn't worth it, I hated it, it wasn't, you know, you're just trying to scam. When have I ever tried to scam somebody? I help everybody out. If it, I help everybody out that has a question that if even if you can't afford, if you don't have a huge car, I'm like, hey, I'll save it for you or hey, you know what? Well, I'll make you a deal. We've known each other long enough. We'll make you a deal. We'll do it like that. And I was perfectly content with not doing any more videos, you know, watching everyone else's videos and, you know, keeping my friends. And then someone messaged me about a week ago. Did you die? Did I die? Yeah, I, I, I was wondering if you died because you haven't made any more videos. Damn. I should have never replied to that message. I really made him feel bad, and I about three weeks ago, I actually, I actually had a rant video, but it was it was thirty seven minutes, and um, it was PSU jig, which I'm assuming stands for Penn State University jig, whatever jig means, because Chris from the Hobby Box was having a panic attack in one of his videos, and this guy named Chris had the box, and apparently in the YouTube community. People aren't allowed to have the same name. So, you know, there's two Chris's isn't just allowed YouTube. No. So, 
you know, I'm the kind of person that was just like, oh, I feel bad, but I'm not going to be one of the 500 people to be like, oh, I hope you feel better, you know. So I just went on with it, and I'm like, hey, Chris, the guy that bought the box, if this one card is for trade, please let me know. This dude went off on me, called me a douchebag, called me a lousy piece of shit, called me uh, an inmate for st stupid stuff like that. I was like, all right, whatever. Tell everybody, you know, then make a rant video. Then I thought, it ain't worth it. Sandusky probably messed with him when he was little or something. But he just he kept talking. So you know what? I decided, you know what? Voice of the Voiceless is back. We're going to keep doing it. I'm not going to, you know, I don't have many subscribers, but the subscribers that I do have, they, they message me. They're they're great. They still ask, ask me questions. And I still answer them. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take the, the the subscribers that I have, and I'm not gonna just tell them I'm not doing this anymore because of one person. Because if people did that in the world, this world would be completely ruined. So Wednesday night, next this one this upcoming Wednesday night, Voice of the Voiceless will have a video on there, and if it and if it goes good, I'll probably start doing a Voice of the Voiceless every Wednesday to compete with you, Jenna Marbles. Just kidding. But um, thanks for thanks for welcoming me back. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I hope everyone has a great October, a great Halloween, and uh, I hope to hear from you guys.